you guys heard of uh, hemophilia or not? So look, you have to know the etiological factors of this condition because the, the treatment is based on your understanding of how this develops, okay? So in hemophilia, it's a genetic issue that affects males. We get it from our mom. Okay, and so in the X chromosome, uh, in the X, uh, the X chromosome has like a faulty clotting factor production gene, right? The gene that helps our body produce clotting factors, which are required to clot. I'm not talking about platelets. I'm talking about the clotting factors, the small pieces of the puzzle. Thromboplastin, fibrinogen, you guys get one of the clotting factors, 8, 9, 10, von Willenbrand, all that stuff, right? This patient with hemophilia, they have something wrong genetically in their ability to produce clotting factors. And when that happens, they uh, cannot clot. And these kids are born with this issue of hemophilia. It, ha it happens exclusively to men, hemophilia issue. They lack clotting factor eight. So they lack clotting factor eight. That's the one that they're lacking. And so you have to know that because if this kid's born with them having an increased likelihood of bleeding, what type of physical activity should they not be partaking in? Not any sports. Yes, yeah, impact sports, right? So no UFC, no MMA, no, no football, no nothing that creates impact because just a small, small tissue injury that causes a typical hematoma is going to cause them to bleed out excessively. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That's the issue in hemophilia. You guys as nurses have to know that this issue is since the time that they're born. So we have to be careful with, with activities that may cause bleeding. We have to also have keen assessment techniques in finding out indications of bleeding. Tachycardia, um, hypotension, restlessness, oliguria eventually, and cold, clammy skin, stuff like that, right? You also have to consider these patients, they, they develop this, these specific types of bleeding um, into their joints. We call it hemarthrosis. So hemarthrosis is when they bleed into the joints. And you, they're going to ask you questions about this stuff. When you have hemarthrosis, do you apply cold or hot compress? Cold. Cold, because cold helps you vasoconstrict, it reduces the bleeding. That's the type of information that you're going to want to be able to um, identify and then, of course, educate the patient about. People that have hemophilia, you have to look out for other indications of bleeding. What does hematuria mean? Blood in the urine. Yeah, blood in the urine. We also may have indications of um, black tarry stools or melana, which is a um, stool that's, that's black and tarry that indicates bleeding. That's what you have to look out for. Also, when they're giving you data information, look for trends as opposed to just low blood pressure, high heart rate. Well, look, did the blood pressure, did the heart rate start off at 87 and now jump to 101 in the last 15 minutes? That's a red flag, that's a problem. And so consider those ideas when you're considering the potentials of bleeding with these patients. There's another condition known as von Willenbrand's disease, and it's uh, also admitting, uh, you're also losing, you're not manufacturing clotting factors, but it includes women as well. So von Willenbrand's disease, it includes women as well. And same thing, the only difference is the etiological factors. That one affects both men and women. This one affects exclusively men. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. One more thing. Don't confuse this with um, thrombocytopenia. Because thrombocytopenia is what? That's right, a lack of platelets, right? Mm -hmm. So if you have a lack of platelets, you're gonna have the same signs and symptoms of, as a patient with hemophilia. Mm -hmm. But the medical intervention is different. Aside from the fact that this patient will only have manifestations when their platelet count drops. This patient has issues their whole life because they have no clotting factors, right? Mm -hmm. So. This is why I say this for the end. You have two patients, a patient with thrombocytopenia, they lack what? Platelets. And your patient with hemophilia, he or he lacks what? Gene. Mm -hmm. Clotting factors, right? Mm -hmm. the, the components that are required to move forward the clotting cascade. Mm -hmm. So when you're gonna treat these patients with your medical interventions, what do you give this patient as opposed to this patient? What do you give thrombocytopenic patients? What do they not have? Uh, uh, platelets. So you give them well, platelets. You give them thrombocytes because that's what they need. This patient, what are they missing? So what do you give them? You give them clotting factors. But where do you find clotting factors? In plasma. So you give them plasma, frozen, frozen plasma transfusion. Does that make sense? That's what you, so you guys have to remember that this patient with thrombocytopenia, 
and hemophilia, they're both going to be bleeding. We understand that. This patient, since they're born, this one, whenever this happens, but this patient, we give platelets. This patient, we can give them all the platelets we want. They don't have clotting factors, so we must give them clotting factors. Require precipitate, frozen plasma, because that's where the clotting factors are located. Does that make sense, guys? Yes. Okay, cool.